welcome. My name is Lexi Jong, and here I like to talk about luxury makeup. Today, we are going to be talking about the new Surat Liquid Blushes. I picked up all four of these. I love Surat, so I was so excited. I've been waiting for these for quite a while. So we're going to talk all about these blushes, the powder blushes. I do not have all of the powder versions in the same shades, but we'll go over what I do have and we're going to take a look at these shades, how they perform, the packaging, and everything else. So first, we're going to go ahead and start off with some information from Surat about this item, these items. I ordered all four of these shades from Surat's website directly. They are becoming available at other retailers uh, very soon, so definitely check those out if you're interested. Now, according to Surat, this is a vibrant liquid version of our classic powder blush. Our top selling powder blush is reimagined as a glimmering liquid with a bouncy sponge applicator inspired by the classic bingo dauber. Twist the wand to reveal a luminous liquid formula with long lasting pigmentation. In four of our most coveted shades, this radiant buildable blush has a touch of light reflection for added dimension. There is cantaloupe or golden melon, parfait, pinky coral, Barba Papa, I'm not sure if I said that correctly, Barbea Papa, uh, Cool Bright Pink, and Classic Warm Magenta. So this is also recommended for application, you know, to take the applicator and it's just to bounce it on your cheeks, blend for a fresh flush of color, bounce again for a bolder look. And you can also blend these with the Torche Lumiere Cream Highlights for an intense glow or layered with a powder blush to amplify the intensity. So this is 8.10 grams of product and these are made in Japan. Now, just so you know, this is what the Torche Lumieres look like. So they are like a cream product. It's like a cream stick, but it's definitely not gonna be, you know, super liquidy. So this one is the shade Diamante. I'll just show you here. This is Parfait. You can kind of mix those a little bit. Honestly, I feel like these are, you know, pretty glistening without it. I don't have any additional highlight on my cheeks. You can see the radiance already. So I did not test it out like this, but you can see in the swatch how it does add just a little bit more of a glistening look if you combine those two products together. I did do a comparison with the powder blush as well. So before, you know, with the powder on top and with the powder on, on the bottom. So we'll look at that and let me go ahead and share that with you. All right, right so I have the Kokendo Aqua Foundation on in shade 002. And we're going to do two different applications here. We are going to start off with a little bit of the Parfait Liquid Blush on the cheek and then top it with the Parfait Powder. And then we're going to do the opposite on my left side. So this is the brush I use for the demos. This is the Chikahoto GSN05. It looks dirty because I haven't washed it yet, but I have actually removed any excess pigment from the bristles already. And I did that in between each trial. So we're just gonna go ahead and get out some of the pigment up here. So I'm kind of more patting this on. I haven't had issues with it moving my foundation, but um, it's also not something that like I tried really hard to do or anything either. So yeah, there we go. So that is the Liquid Parfait. And you know, you can see all of the shimmer, the shine in here. It's definitely a shimmery liquid as they describe it. This is the Parfait Blush. And for this, I'm gonna take the Katie Jane Hughes 03 brush, and you can see that it has, you know, two lengths of fibers here, so it's almost like a stippling powder brush. We're gonna just do a light dust. So on my face, though, as I mentioned, I have the Coke and Dough foundation, but I don't have, like I didn't set it with powder. So you can see how much more intense that gets. And I have to say, like, the blush itself doesn't feel tacky, really, to the skin but it still feels moist and it really just like grabs onto that powder. So let's see if we can, I mean, this is obviously way too far forward, but this is for the sake of everybody being able to see the color as well. All right, 
So there's that. And now we're gonna use the same brush with just the powder on this side. So you can see how much more softly the powder goes on. And now we're gonna do the same thing here with the liquid blush. Just put this on top. So the reason we're doing this is because this blush actually, you know, the shimmering liquid can act a little bit more like a highlight. So you can see though that even putting it on top of the powder, it does seem to get a little bit more vibrant. You got that shimmer there, but yeah, so I was thinking maybe it might work a little bit as a highlight. And I think, you know, let's just try it just with a little bit tapped with the fingers here. So yeah, if you're looking for like a, like a, a colored highlight, I think tapping a little bit of these blushes on with that really works. Obviously the side's really messy. Sorry about that. All right, so I'm just gonna spread out this blush a little bit more. And then this is obviously way too much for me. So I'm gonna go in with my foundation brush that I used today. And I didn't add any more foundation, but I'm just gonna kind of go over this a little bit, kind of tone it down. All right, so I mean, that's toned down. It's not perfect, but you know, this is what we're gonna stick with for today. I'm gonna bring you in closer again. We're just gonna use this one more time as a highlight. All right, so you can see that sometimes it does kind of ooze a little bit into the lid when I'm not using it. Just gonna dab a tiny bit on and we'll do this to both sides so you can really kind of see the difference here. So it does just add a little bit more of a pigmented shimmer, works as a highlight. I hope that clip was helpful so you can kind of see that. I do have swatch clips on my cheeks of the blushes and we'll get to those when we start talking about my thoughts. But first I thought we would go ahead and swatch all of the shades and the powder ones I do have. The only powder blush I don't have is the Cantaloupe. So I have the others, but one more time, just so you can see how it has settled. This is the Torche Lumiere with the Parfait Blush. So can you see the particles in there? Definitely very shimmery. So we're gonna start off with the Parfait. And let me just show you, you know, when you dab it on. So one thing to note with this particular applicator, I personally, I have been wearing these for quite a while before I reviewed these because I really wanted to be sure, but I don't like using the sponge applicator. So you can see if you keep going over it, it kind of like dilutes it a little bit. But one of the other things to note is the hole that the product comes out, there's like a little tube in there. So you can kind of feel it. You can kind of feel like the hard tube inside. So I think, you know, I don't like that. So this is Parfait. I'm going to dab some on here with my finger as well so you can see the color a little bit better. You can build it to this color. If you're using the sponge chip applicator, I find it very difficult to build it to that level. But if you use your fingers or a brush, it is much, much easier. So this is the Parfait powder. Just put that right underneath so you can see the difference in colors. So in my opinion, there's a little bit more pink in the liquid version than there is in the powder version. The powder version is a little bit more coral, whereas it's more of a pinky coral in the liquid. Next, we're gonna look at Classique. And let's just start putting this on here. The other thing, when you use this, you can see that you know, you get the little circles, even though I'm not like twisting the dial. So just something to note there. Get a little bit more there. So there's Classique. 
So this is the powder. I actually have not worn this yet. It's a new purchase for me. I feel like they are pretty similar. The liquid might be very, very slightly warmer, but I'd say they're pretty spot on. And this one is Barba Papa. So this is a cool tone, kind of like a, a brighter, more like Barbie pink. Here's the liquid for that. Let's get a little bit more. And again, I haven't used this one yet either, but you can see that the powder version of this is very shimmery. And here's the powder for Barba Papa. Again, both very, very beautiful. I think the powder is a little bit cooler. I see a little bit more of a blue tone reflect in the powder that I don't really see in the liquid. And then last up here is cantaloupe. And this one, again, is the, I don't have the powder of this. I have to say, this was the one shade that I almost didn't buy because I thought it was gonna be a lot deeper than it was. I didn't think it would work well on my skin tone, but it's actually very light. So there's cantaloupe. So from the beginning, we have Parfait, Classique, Barba Papa, and cantaloupe. And you can see that, you know, without turning, sometimes it does ooze up because it, it has like a delayed mechanism, it seems. So sometimes when I'm trying to get the liquid up, I have to turn it a lot to get the liquid to come up. And then other times after it has sat for a few minutes, it just kind of you know, does it itself. So I tried each of these shades on my cheeks and underneath each one, I had the Kokendo Aqua Foundation in 002 and nothing else on my face. So I cleaned my face off every time, reapplied the foundation. And on my right side, I use a fingertip application so you could see the color and you could see how it builds. And then on the left side, I used a brush and I used the Chikahoto GSN 05 brush. And in between each use, I did wipe it off on a high nap cloth and really got in the bristles to make sure there was no remaining pigment. So even though it looks stained, there's technically no additional pigment coming off. I did test it and everything. So there shouldn't be any color transfer between the samples. And then Let's go ahead and I'm going to give you my thoughts as I share with you these swatches. Now, first I'd like to begin by saying that the packaging on these, I don't love the packaging. Um, these kind of twist, twist up applicators, I feel like they are inconsistent. The product does not come up smoothly. Sometimes, you know, you get just a tiny little bit that comes up. Other times you're turning for like what seems like hours. And especially at the beginning, at the beginning, you definitely have to turn them a lot. But one of the things to note when you have a brand new tube that has not been used before, there's kind of like, um, you know, like when you're turning these click things, how it clicks every time you turn, there will be like a set of no resistance where you turn it all the way to get to that point where you're, you'll start getting resistance. So when you have a new tube, you can kind of turn it around like maybe a full 360 degrees or so before you start getting to the point where you will get clicks. And then you still have to click a while before the product comes up. Now, as I mentioned, it's inconsistent because sometimes I will turn a lot and get pretty much nothing. Other times I'll turn a lot and a whole bunch will ooze up at one time. Sometimes, you know, nothing's coming up and I've actually put it down before and five minutes later it oozes up. So I just feel like the applicator itself could use some work. Now, as for the foam tip applicator, I don't really like the foam tip applicator. The sponge itself, you know, I feel like it is not ideal for applying the product. Regardless of the, the metal, I don't know if it's metal, but the tube I can feel in the center where the liquid comes up, regardless of that, the actual texture of the sponge is a foam texture, but it does seem to kind of absorb the product. And every time, I'm trying to apply with the applicator. 
it's it kind of like picks up a little bit too much. So if I'm trying to blend something out, it kind of picks up a little bit of what's already on my face. And yeah, so I don't like it. I think for this, the best way to apply this is either with your fingertips or with a brush. Personally, I like to use a small brush. In the demos, I did use the Chikahoto GSM-05, but my favorite is actually the Kyoto F07, which is like a little mini flat top kabuki brush. I also really like the little rougher one. <laughs> you know, I just use these. <laughs> they're, they're, they're being washed and they're drying right now. I think it's rougher 17, but I'll leave the number down below. It's the rougher foundation brush. And I personally don't use it for foundation, but I love it for creams and liquids for blushes. And that brush in particular works really well with these because it is short, it's dense, and it has kind of the right diameter for my cheek shape without going, you know, kind of all over the place like I kind of did with this brush today. So those are some of the ones I really like to apply these particular liquid blushes with. Now, another thing to know about the formula, it's definitely a shimmery formula. If your skin is in great condition, I think that this blush looks like a beautiful highlighting blush. You definitely have shimmer. You don't really need additional highlight if you are like me and you don't want something super blingy. If you want something super blingy, you can actually mix these with a highlighting liquid as well. So I have tried that with the By Terry uh, Illuminating Liquids, the, the white one, which is... I don't remember, it's the CC Serum. And uh, so I have tried it with that. You can definitely, it'll dilute the color, make it more sparkly. You can also do it with the Torche Lumieres from Surat. And I think um, Shantakai has a liquid illuminator as well. I don't have that, but those types of products will work to kind of give you more luminosity with that. However, these have plenty of luminosity for me on their own. And one thing to know is if your skin is not in great condition. So for example, I had some like extra creasing on my face's face for the other day from the way I slept and it totally accentuated all of those lines and wrinkles there. So I do think that if you've got any texture on your skin at all, it does accentuate those. So overall, I think that this is a beautiful liquid blush. I think it has a beautiful shimmer to it. It's gonna work well for a lot of people. I think it looks, you know, you can get it very natural. You can build the color up on these. It does not work as well to build it up with the applicator, but it's definitely something you can do without the applicator. I think that the applicator itself is kind of problematic, so I don't really care for that. So another thing I'd like to mention is the wear time on these blushes is great. They do last all day on me. I did not film a wear test, but I did do a few different wear tests with powder that I set, powder, no powder, you know, just cream products, things like that. So I tested them a few different ways and in all situations, they all wore, you know, a good eight to 10 hours. That's kind of what I used for my testing period. Some days I did have them on longer, they were still there. So I had no issues with the blush fading or going away. So I think that's pretty good. I do think if you have oilier skin, my skin is normal to slightly dry. And I think if your skin is a little bit oilier, you may see some fading by the end of the day, but I think overall they're going to last uh, you know, around eight hours or so for most people. So I think that is good. But do I recommend this blush? That's really kind of mixed. So I think it depends on how you want to apply this. I don't like the applicator, but that's not a deal breaker for me because there are other products that I really like the product inside, but I don't like the applicator and I still buy them, such as the Chantecai Le Camouflage CLO. So uh, I would... You know, for me, the applicator is not a deal breaker. If you're looking for a cream or liquid blush though, that's kind of like all in the one go and you don't want to have to use your fingers, this would not fit those requirements because this applicator is just not very good. Mm -hmm. However, if you don't care about the applicator and you are looking for a more highlighting or shimmery blush that is liquid and stays put, it's a really nice product and I really like that. If you do have a lot of texture or anything on your cheeks though, this may not be the ideal product for you because it's not really the way the liquid works with your cheeks that's causing the accentuation. It's more the fact that it's a shimmering liquid. So that highlight and the way it catches the light will accentuate texture in that area. So it's just something to note. 
Now, as to using these with and without the powder, you know, obviously if you want to intensify either the powder or the liquid, then pairing them together with the powder on top definitely intensified it. And, um, you know, that's definitely going to be a great option for people with deeper skin tones who maybe don't want to build it up quite as much with the liquid, or maybe it's not getting quite as deep as they'd like. For me, it's probably a little bit too much, so I won't really be doing that. I do actually like using the powder blush and then using these liquids as a highlight. And that's another thing to note is that these liquids, if you tap them on lightly, they work beautifully as a highlight because you can really share these out. Even Classique, I could use as a highlight, just sheared out a little bit, or I can mix it with a little bit of foundation or concealer to just lighten it a little bit as well. So I think that, you know, they can be dual purpose for that. So overall, it's a nice product. Packaging is not my favorite. And if you do have things that you don't want to be accentuated, a shimmering liquid blush might not be ideal for you, but I think it is a very nice product. So let's look one more time at the swatches. And again, we have the Parfait, and this was done with the applicator. And then this is the Parfait liquid after it has dried. And you can see that it still has some shimmer in there versus the powder, which is going to be a little bit more of a true coral. And then we have Classique, which is kind of that bright red looking one, but you can see that it really can kind of be diffused. And this was built up, so you know, you can definitely get this more sheer. This is the liquid and the powder. And then we have Barba Papa, and you can see again here that this is going to be a lot lighter. You can build it up, but it's still going to be a lighter option compared to these other two, actually. So this one kind of is still a little bit lighter. Here is the powder, which is going to be a little bit cooler in tone. And you can see when I move a little bit of a blue reflect in the powder. And then we have cantaloupe. This is only liquid. I don't have the powder. It looked a lot deeper online than it does in person. And this one can sheer out very much. So if you're really interested in that color, but you want something a little deeper, Parfait actually goes on deeper on my cheeks than Cantaloupe does. So just something to note that may change a little bit depending on people's undertones. So those are the swatches on me. One other thing I would like to note about Surratt, if you're interested in purchasing from their website, they are offering 25% off your purchase if you schedule an online consultation with them. So if you're interested in any of these liquid blushes or something else from Surratt, that would definitely be a great opportunity. You know, schedule the consultation. Maybe they can swatch some things or recommend some other things for you. And then you can have 25% off on your purchase. If, however, you don't want to purchase from Surratt, they are going to be showing up at other retailers very soon. I know they were available for pre-order, or maybe they still are. So they should be coming out shortly to other retailers. As always, I'll have all of the purchasing information down below in the description box, and I hope you enjoyed this video. So if this was helpful, please give me a thumbs up, consider subscribing if you haven't already, and I'll see you very soon. So have a great day and stay safe and healthy.